Here with me, His Excellency Suhail Mazrui, Minister of Energy and Infrastructure in UAE. Always good to have you, sir. Thank you very much. It's good to be with you. So let's start by UAE working towards achieving the, na the nation's energy strategy 2050 to reduce carbon footprint by 70% by adopting artificial intelligence and sustainable technologies such as carbon capturing. What is happening here? Well, we are so glad that we, we announced our, since we announced our strategy in 2017, uh, we have done lots of initiatives and projects in that regard. We have seen a large scale solar projects. Uh, the latest is two gigawatt Adafra plant at a very, very competitive price of 1.35 cent per kilowatt hour. Uh, we have seen as well uh, shifting to uh, new forms of energy such as uh, uh, hydrogen. So we have seen uh, some initiatives on the blue hydrogen. We have seen the, uh, the launching of the first green hydrogen plant in Dubai, in Diwa. And we have seen uh, progress to reduce emissions as well through demand side management and some other uh, regulations that the government put like the solar rooftops uh, law that we have we have issued and several initiatives now next year is the year for updating that strategy every five years we update the strategy we look at the uh, at the technology we look at what's available and then we will update the strategy in accordance with what is happening around us uh, this year is a very interesting year for the energy worldwide. We have seen hikes in the uh, fossil fuel uh, energies, all types. The lowest in terms of increase was the oil. But if you look at the coal or the uh, natural gas, the increase in prices was five folds or four folds for coal. And that have never happened in the uh, previous uh, time. So that will, I'm sure, affect our choices for the future. We are committed to reduce carbon. I think what's new is our net zero uh, strategic uh, initiatives that we have announced. And the, uh, as a result of COP26, all of the countries have pledged their, uh, their plans. Now we need to ensure that the transition we have enough energy to supply the world with. So we are working on a parallel track to ensure that we are upgrading our strategy, keeping uh, renewable energy uh, and reduction of CO2 emissions as a target, but at the same time, continue as a sensible uh, investor and supplier of, uh, of uh, oil and gas to the rest of the world. Speaking about this energy transition and hydrogen, is hydrogen the fuel of the future and when do you think hydrogen will take off? Well, hydrogen definitely has a huge potential and we believe on that in UAE. But when we talk about hydrogen, there are different forms of hydrogen. One, affordable, commercial, which is the blue hydrogen, and we have plenty of it. And we are utilizing that. The, the, uh, the announced ADNOC plant of one million ton of, uh, of blue ammonia, that's one utilization uh, for, uh, for hydrogen. And we think there will be demand, uh, growing demand for blue ammonia in the future. The second is working with the technology provider to reduce the cost of green hydrogen. Today, it's a bit expensive, and we need to work with the technology providers to reduce the price to make it, to make it available. I think uh, the different forms of, of, uh, of hydrogen will complement each other rather than competing with each other to provide the solution for tomorrow. But definitely we believe in hydrogen and that's why I mentioned we have the first green hydrogen plant and we have also uh, identified projects to utilize blue hydrogen in our industries. What will oil and gas industry need to do to attract high levels of investments nowadays? I'm worried about that because, because we have seen at COP26 some pressure on the oil and gas companies and countries regarding the investments. So we are seeing shying away from investment. And that is alarming. I think we need to attract investors and we need to be realistic about the demand. The demand is picking up 
and we need to be ready for that demand in the future. I'm not worried about the short term next year. I'm rather worried about the medium to long term if we don't invest. We need to invest at least $600 billion every year in the next few years as we are losing, the producers are losing capacity and they need to replace such barrels by new drilling and new investments. If they are not, if the investment community are not supporting that, I'm, I'm sure we will have a problem down the road. But I'm hopeful at the same time that countries like UAE are pledging their targets to continue investing in the oil and gas. Uh, our target for a capacity of 5 million barrels by the year 2030 is there, and we will continue doing our job. We need the IUCs and the international community to also do their job. Last question and quickly, please, about uh, ADIPEC this year. How does it feel to come back, meet everybody face to face? What is the main message that ADIPEC is sending the world from uh, this year's event? Very refreshing, very comforting to see people face to face. I think we have seen an overwhelming subscription, a number of papers that have been submitted, the number of ministers who have uh, came, all of these numbers are impressive. It shows that the industry is ready to come back and people are so happy to interact face to face. Of course, it wasn't easy to do it and keeping all of the uh, normal uh, uh, precautions, but we have done it successfully. And I would like to thank those uh, frontliners standing behind us and, and, and ensuring that people coming back to their countries safe after this experience and interaction at Adebek.